because uh, it's past 12.30, so, uh, I mean, we did say 12.30. But, you know, sometimes you have to wait for technology and everything. So anyway, again, my name is Persia, and I am a drag queen. <laughs> uh, again, welcome to Drag Queen Story Hour. Thank you so much, uh, San Jose Museum of Art, for having me and our program here today on our last uh, Drag Queen Story Hour. Uh, I will be reading two books. The first one is My Princess Boy, and the second is Radiant Child, the story of young artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. Uh, I'm so excited to re read them both. So we're gonna start with this one first. So here we go. My Princess Boy, a mom's story about a young boy who loves to dress up by Cheryl Killow Davis, Illustrated by Susan Des Desimone. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, anyway, let's get started. My princess boy is four years old. That's one, two, three, four. He likes pretty things. Pink is his favorite color. He plays dress up in girly dresses. He dances like a beautiful ballerina. So there we go. Look at those, the colors, the dress, that little crown right there, that's super cute. My princess boy has a cool brother. His brother plays basketball and soccer, and his brother dances with my princess boy my princess boy loves his brother. I mean, who doesn't love a sibling, right? Sometimes, you know, your brother or your sister drive you crazy. That's okay, sometimes that happens. I have two sisters and they drive me crazy, but I love them. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Uh, my princess boy loves his dad. His dad tells my princess boy how pretty he looks in a dress. His dad holds his hand and tells him to twirl. My princess boy smiles, hugs his dad. That's so awesome. Look at that. Who doesn't love to twirl? This is so much fun. Especially if you're wearing like a flowy dress, it's like whoosh. And look, a lot of pink. I love the, the, the pink, in the, the pink sky and the green. Look at that, all that grass. My princess boy has play dates with boys and girls. He likes to climb trees in his princess boy tiara crown. When he plays dress up, he likes to change clothes a lot. He wears a green, green ballet leotard and dances with his friends. <gasps> yes, who doesn't love an outfit change? Oh, I should have had an outfit change, right, for the next book. Uh, next time, next time. And look, playing with his friends, super cute. I love my princess boy. When we go shopping, he is the happiest when looking at girls' clothes. But when he says he wants to buy a pink bag or a sparkly dress, people stare at him. And when he buys girl things, they laugh at him. And they laugh at me. It hurts us both. That's not nice. You know, clothes are just clothes. Clothes are not boy clothes or girl clothes. You know, whatever makes you happy, that's what you should wear. Whatever your body likes to wear, that's, that's the kind of clothes you should wear. And if it's sparkly, yes. If it's not, that's okay too. Once my princess boy wore a dress at his birthday party, he welcomed all his friends to his home and he said, I am a princess boy. He put on jewelry. He liked how pretty he looked and wait his princess boy wand. Yes. I mean, who doesn't love to dress up, especially if it's your birthday? 
Yes. Look at that. So happy princess boy right here. And then my princess boy was a princess for Halloween. He went trick-or-treating with his brother. One woman laughed at him because he was in a princess dress. My princess boy asked, why did she laugh at me? I told him some people don't think boys should wear dresses. And again, clothes are just clothes. If you want to wear a dress, wear a dress. If you want to wear pants, wear pants. Whatever makes you comfortable. But a princess boy can wear a dress at his school and I will not laugh at him. And a princess boy can wear pink, and I will tell him how pretty he looks. And it's great, once you're wearing things that make you comfortable, you are automatic automatically happier, you're friendlier, and people notice that. And when you're happy inside, other people notice, and that it creates a positive environment for everyone. A princess boy can play with me in pretty girl clothes and I will still play with him. That's right. And I will keep saying this, clothes are just clothes. If you, that's right, you, if you see a princess boy, will you laugh at him? Will you call him a name? Will you play with him? Will you like him for who he is? <gasps> Our princess boy is happy because we love him for who he is. And that's right. My princess boy is your princess boy. So if you ever see a princess boy out there, say hello. Say hey, nice outfit. <laughs> the end. I hope you enjoyed this because this is one of my favorite books because, you know, it, you can dress however you want to dress. It's, it's what makes you comfortable. And I know I, I, I said it like two or three times, but I, I always say that because, you know, I only wear what makes me comfortable. And sometimes dressing like this makes me really comfortable. So there you go. Okay, are you ready for the next book? Are you ready for the next book? Let me get a little more comfortable here because I have really long legs. So it's like falling asleep. Let me wake it up. Wake up, wake up. Okay, here we go. The next book, wait, before we get to the next book, I have a joke for you. <laughs> I know last time, wait, I don't remember what joke I said last time. I know it was like the, oh, it was, was it a turkey? I don't know, I don't remember. I think it was a turkey. But I have another joke, a really bad joke, and that's fine, you know. Uh, how does a cat eat their steak? How does a cat eat their steak? Okay, I'm really terrible. I think it's, no, 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 I think it's like that, yeah. So how does a cat like their steak? Hmm, Any, anything? Well, I can't really hear you, but I'm, I'm gonna pretend that you're trying to guess right now, and that's beautiful. How does a cat like their steak? <laughs> Yeah, they like it rare. <coughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that horrible joke of mine, but I love it. Anyway, are you up for the next book? Because I am. Here we go. Next book, Radiant Child, the story of young, of, of young artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. Yes. I am so excited to read this. Here we go. 
Somewhere in Brooklyn, between hearts that thump, double touch, and hotch hotch, and salty mouths that slurp at sweet ice, a little boy dreams of being a famous artist. Look at all those colors, those lines. In his house, you can tell a serious artist dwells as he sits at the table with pencils scattered everywhere. Jean-Michel draws from morning till night with a serious face. Amid a storm of papers, he refuses to sleep until, has, until he has created a masterpiece. He's hard at work right there. Look at that. You can see his serious face, all the papers, all the drawings, all the pencils. And look at the back. Jean-Michel's mind, and he wakes from his dream to add one more line. His drawings are not neat or clean, nor does he color inside the lines. <gasps> Let me repeat that line because this is really important. He, his drawings are not neat or clean, nor does he color inside the lines. They are sloppy, ugly, sometimes weird, but somehow still beautiful. His art comes from his mother, Mathilde, a Puerto Rican woman who designs and sews, cooks and cleans, and makes the house look like a stylish magazine. Most important, she lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel on his father's old work papers. And so look, they're working together. Mom sees how hard he's working. Look how happy he is. And look at all these shapes and colors. There's a Puerto Rican flag right there. No. From her, he learns that art is not only in the in poetry books she reads to him, or in theaters and museums they visit. Art is in the streets. Art is the street games of little children in our, in our style and words that we speak. It is how the messy patchwork of the city creates new meaning for ordinary things. So art can be found everywhere, not just in theaters, well, movies, or museums. He saw art everywhere, especially in the streets. And if you take a look when you're out and about, take a look at different like shapes. Maybe a house is, is a different color or a different shape. And you can see art everywhere you go just like he did. While visiting the museum, they look at his favorite works of art, reading the stories behind each artist, reading the stories behind each work. This is how Jean-Michel learns what it means to be a famous artist. So if you've ever been to a museum, you see that there's the artwork, and then right next to it, there's a lot of words with the artist's name and the name of the piece. And it gives you a lot of information on what the artist was trying to do or what this piece means. So it's really important to read all that stuff. Back at home, he creates art on the floor as his father, Gerald, plays jazz records. Mama Matilde cooks arroz con pollo. Mm, now I'm hungry. Arroz con pollo and calls <laughs> Uh, Jean-Michel, mi amor. The energy and life of the city can be felt in each line of his drawings. So he was inspired by everything around him. His mom, his dad, 
the streets, the noise outside in Brooklyn. As time goes by, Jean Michel learns that art has a healing power. After a car accident, he is scared and confused. Mathilde gives him a book to calm his fears. It is filled with pictures of bones, skulls, and other body parts. Jean Michel draws from it until he knows it all by heart. He is no longer afraid. So that book really helped him heal from, from that accident. And he was scared and afraid, but that book really helped him. This reminds me of that book I read last time, the Frida Kahlo, where she also had an accident and her mom made her an easel so she can draw and things like that, so yeah. Back at home, Jean-Michel's body heals, but his, his heart breaks. His mother's mind is not well, and the family breaks. She no longer lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel, but sits by the window singing only to birds. Jean-Michel is confused and filled with, a te with terrible blues when Mathilde can no longer live at home. That's really, really sad. And there he is, just looking out the window. He tries drawing the terrible out of his blues, but things are not the same. As Jean-Michel grows older, he visits his mother when he can, always bringing his artwork to show, telling her that one day, one day, it will be in a museum when I am a famous artist. And he had a goal, and he, he did become a famous artist. A teenager now, Jean-Michel decides, Papa, I will be very, very famous one day. With a sly look and a twinkle in his eye, Jean-Michel leaves Brooklyn for New York City. The Lower East Side a concrete jungle where only the tough survive. So he left his home to pursue art. And again, we could see that nothing's really like perfect, you know, and look at, look at all like the drawings and stuff. <laughs> During the day, dressed in a green jumpsuit, splattered with paint, Jean-Michel stays with friends, sleeping on couches and floors, leaving a barrage of collage and poems filled papers everywhere he goes. So he just never stopped drawing or writing poetry. He was always making art no matter where he was. At night, Jean-Michel spray paints the walls downtown with poems and drawings that catch the eye of artists, gallery goers, and past buyers. Under his art, he signs the name Samo. Instead of Jean-Michel, everybody wants to know who is Samo. from street corners to gallery walls with powerful color compositions and line co collaging and painting on anything he can find. His art is not neat or clean and definitely not inside the lines, but somehow still beautiful. With his magical charm, Jean-Michel draws a crowd, but when it's time to work, he prefers to be alone, with the radio and TV on full blast. Now in expensive suits, splattered with paint, he flips through stacks of magazines and opens books and paints into the night, and sometimes for days at a time, while sounds and images jump into his head. So this is how he worked by himself, listening to the radio. 
That's awesome. How do you work? How do you do homework? <laughs> do you like to be alone? Do you like to play a little radio in the background? Everyone does it different. Jean-Michel, an artist among artists, never doubts one line, creating from a soundtrack that is all his own. People described him as radiant, wild, a genius child, but it is his heart he is king, so he draws crowns for himself and others he admires. So if you're familiar with his work, there's a lot of crowns. And that's why he draws those crowns. Oh, there's another one right there. A grown man now, with the art world in his hands, John the Show visits, still visits his mother when he can. And at his most important shows, above all the critics, fans, and artists he admires, the place of honor in his mother's a queen on a throne. He is now a famous artist. And he, this is one of his paintings. And can you see where his mom is? Let's see, can you, can you? Kind of a little hard to see, especially, you know, over the, the internet. <laughs> there she is, she's right there, and you see the crown above her. Oh, the end. Oh my goodness, this has been Drag Queen Story Hour. I hope you enjoyed the two books. Uh, I hope. I get to see you soon in another Drag Queen Story Hour. Um, I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous day. Please be kind to your body, mind, and soul, and, uh, and be safe at all times. Wash your hands. And if you're gonna be outside, cover your mouths with uh, something. <laughs> anyway, love you so much. This has been Persia. Thank you. Thank you, San Jose Museum of Art. Thank you, Drag Queen Story Hour. Adios.